The first topic I wanted to discuss today is something that was more recent, relatively recent, and that is the return of a character to the MCU that, well, on the one hand, I think we all sort of expected this to be happening, but on the other hand, it is a little bit surprising as well, and I'll go into the reasons why I think this is a good idea and why I think this is a bad idea. So one of the forgotten films of the MCU, one of the films that not a lot of people talk about anymore, is Avengers Age of Ultron. It came out in 2015. It was the follow-up, obviously, to one of the most successful MCU films in many aspects, right? Financially, successfully, uh, critically as well, Avengers, 2012's Avengers. It was really the proof of concept to show that the MCU could thrive in a in a world where superhero films were finally getting their footing, especially leading the way with films like Iron Man and The Dark Knight and whatnot. So first Avengers, and then, you know, there was going to be a sequel. Phase 2 was off, and it was a little rocky, but, you know, for the most part, it had some very interesting characters and interesting films, Captain America Winter Soldier, Guardians of the Galaxy, who were not in that Avengers film. But, you know, if you're going to make a sequel to the Avengers, then obviously um, it's going to, you know, it's going to go big, and, and the villain was going to be Ultron. Now, uh, a lot of people have since... I feel like the opinions have changed on Avengers Age of Ultron in, in the years since, at least from what I've been hearing from people. I think there are those who maybe think the film is a little mid or a little you know less interesting than it, it, they originally thought, which I think is totally fine, totally fair. But I think there are a lot of people also that I've been talking to who have gained a little bit of an appreciation for the film as the years have gone by. And I am actually one of those people. I, you know, I did an Infinity Saga rewatch series a while ago where I talked about Avengers Age of Ultron, and I mentioned, and this this was a while ago admittedly, but still, I think a lot of the thoughts remain consistent on my front that, you know, every time you watch the film, it's, it's a kind of a realization of, especially if you've seen the first Avengers uh, recently before Age of Ultron, that, you know, this isn't quite the film that the first Avengers is. There's a lot of things that you kind of wish were a little better. It feels almost like a lighter version of the first Avengers. That being said, it's a very fun film. I think that it got a lot of flack at the time for just not being as good as the first Avengers, but I don't think that that's really the film's biggest problem. One of the things that I've always praised about the film uh, is that while the character was maybe not written the best, and, and by written I mean more so the character arc and the or character progression and maybe some of the quips, the overly quippiness of the character, I think Ultron honestly is one of the better villains of the MCU. I don't say that in terms of, again, like I said, you know, just pure writing of a character. He doesn't have a Thanos-level character arc, but you, you kind of understand where he's coming from. It's one of those, you know, classic AI gone rogue kind of things, but again, you see this idea of Ultron seeing what's wrong with the Avengers, what's wrong with the world, and, you know, under uh, thinking that the only way to fix all of it is to get rid of the Avengers. I think that that is a very interesting take on artificial intelligence. I just think that it was condensed so much into a movie that you weren't really able to get uh, too far into it, you know, for a character as complex as Ultron uh, as we would have liked. Well, it looks like that is all about to change because Ultron will be making his return into the live-action MCU in probably 2026 as it is confirmed now that Ultron, and not when I say confirmed, it's not been confirmed by Marvel or Disney, but it's been confirmed by the major outlets that Ultron will return in the Vision series and James Spader will return to the role. A uh, couple things here that I wanted to talk about. First of all, it is interesting because the signs have been there maybe a little bit with Ultron having such a big presence in the What If series. And I know that What If is not really seen as a part of the MCU or, or it's it's seen as a part of the MCU, but it's not really, you know, MCU proper, if you will. But Ultron had a really big part in that series. And honestly, while there's not a lot that I love about What If, there are a few episodes and a few characters that I, that I enjoy in What If. Ultron, Infinity Ultron, or whatever they're, they're going to call it, was actually one of my favorite parts because that was really Ultron unleashed and and showing the, the full potential of what that character could be. Ultron has always been just a really cool character. There's something so inherently cool about a robot that, you know, kind of is a philosophizing um, a robot that can really match up to the Avengers in that regard. So that was always, you know, seeing that in What If was always a really, uh, a really you know, point of, of big interest for me as well. So the, the groundwork is being laid, but in the back of my mind, I, I kind of thought, let's, you know, let's move on to other characters. I think there are other ways to explore. Uh, let's, you know, let's just try to, to branch out a little bit. Um, 
but I also thought, and I always knew that it was a possibility that Ultron would, you know, could come it back into the MCU because it's a character that, well, you know, you can say all we want that he died in Avengers Age of Ultron. The fact of the matter is he's a robot. He's an artificial intelligence. He's basically in the internet. He can come back in pretty much any form and kind of wreak havoc on the MCU. So on the one hand, I'm, I'm happy about this because I think that more James Spader as Ultron is always a good thing. And, you know, I think that uh, we haven't even begun to scratch the potential of this character, and I'm very excited to see where he goes from here. On the other hand, I think the prospect of reviving yet another legacy MCU character and not, you know, just bringing him back, it, it makes me wonder what the point of this is here in this Vision series because we've done we've been doing this a lot, right? We've been really digging deep into the well of MCU characters and bringing characters back, like the Abomination, for example, that, you know, we thought that we'd never see again. And, I, you know, not that people would have been happy to never see Abomination again, but just as an example, I don't think that if they never brought him back, it would have been, you know, a massive deal. Perhaps Ultron is, is a little bit different because Ultron is, is much more popular than a character like Abomination. But still, um, I, I do... Uh, I just wonder what the slippery slope of this is, I suppose. Because, yes, Ultron is a character that you can kind of do this with and get away with it because, you know, it's artificial intelligence. He can come back in any form. That being said, how are you going to build in stakes where you actually can beat Ultron when he is like this, right? It, it seems a little bit strange um, that that they're going in, the, in that direction because it really kind of undermines the fact that how can you beat a character like that. A couple other interesting things of note, though. I don't believe in the Hollywood Reporter article where this was announced that they they said that Ultron is going to be the villain of the show, um, which is interesting because perhaps he could be a kind of rogue agent as a Zemo character kind of was in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The other couple interesting things here is that one, the Vision series is on track to be filming in early 2025. So it really looks like this is going to be the next series after Wonder Man is done filming, which I think is, is kind of an interesting thing. Um, and the other interesting note, which I don't know if it's a flourish from the writer of the article, or if this is actually what is intended by Marvel, but this, uh, this writer wrote that this is meant to be the third in a trilogy of series, starting with WandaVision, then Agatha all along, which is coming out in just over a month, I think, or just, sorry, just under a month, and then it's going to be Vision, and, you know, it was originally called Vision Quest, I don't know what it's being called now, but I think that that's actually kind of an interesting way to look at that, you know, I don't, again, I don't know if this is an interpretive thing, like the author of the article is saying, oh, you know, it just seems like there, there are three projects here that all seem related to one another, or if this is actually what Marvel had always intended, and this, this person has inside information on that, that yeah, this is a trilogy in, in a sense that these three series are sort of serving as three parts of one story focusing on different characters. I Look, I, it's no secret that I love Paul Bettany in the role of Vision. Vision is one of my favorite characters in the MCU. I do think that, especially with this white Vision, there are some interesting avenues to take, but I also, you know, want to caution and, and hope that they're not just going to, again, with Vision and with Ultron, they're not just bringing characters back for the sake of bringing popular characters back because, um, I think that that could be a little bit detrimental to an MCU that's already um, on weaker ground. But I ask you guys, what do you think about Vision? And what do you think about the show? What do you think about the concept that, you know, what what the, the rumors that have been going on? Do you think that, like myself, that a Young Avengers kind of team could be related to this series? Let me know in the comments down below. And also, obviously, let me know what you think about James Spader returning as Ultron. Again, always good to have more James Spader. Always good to have more Ultron. Just hoping that the story is able to justify what's going on here.